Welcome to KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew and Jack all up in your face. Join in on the experiment by calling or texting us at 913-735-0060. We dare you. Welcome to 100.3 FM KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew. I'm Paul, that is Drew, and that is Jack. This is a show where we talk about things from last week and the things that may happen next week. And yes, it's very weak. We're the other show where everything is made up and the points don't matter. You can join the experiment by calling or texting us at 913-735-0060. We welcome your participation. We broadcast live every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You can listen at 100.3 FM on your radio dial. And live streaming at www.kctk.radio12345.com. But it's easier to listen to use the Listen to My Radio app on your phone. Once you get the app, just search for KCTK. We welcome all of our listeners from around the world and all of you out there in uh, audio land. We also want to remind you you can watch all the past adventures on YouTube at the KCTK Radio channel whenever you want. We are also broadcasting live on Facebook Live this evening. Yay! But that's not all. This program is offered as a podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, SoundCloud, Podbean, Instagram, and anywhere you get your favorite podcast. Welcome to the program. A fun, fun Wednesday program where we're getting back into the swing of things. I personally am, and one of the things I love to swing at is introducing the man of the hour, the guy that makes it all happen. Here he is. He is the Droosh. Hi, Droosh. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's the Droosh, a.k.a. Otter, a.k.a. Bear. Oh. Oh, okay. A.k.a. Repeating. You've done that before. <laughs> no, I haven't. I did something else. Yeah, you did. <laughs> In that category. Oh. Yeah, you did Yeah, the same thing. I thought I did Twink and Stink. No, you did Otter and Bear. But oh. it's okay. You're still the same. But people may be thinking that we're on a... Um, people are going to think that they already listened to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I already listened <laughs> to Otter and Bear. Oh, no. Damn it. Oh, That's no. okay. Um, whatever you have to say is fine. <laughs> I do want to introduce everybody to the man of the hour, the guy that makes it all happen. Oh, wait. Here he is, Jack. Hi, Jack. Hello. I make it happen? Are you yes. sure? <laughs> yeah, you do. Wow. That's an honor. That's an honor. Now, last week was quite the show because you were, you came in a little bit late. I did. I did. I was uh, Jack's hot dog stands. Mm-hmm. You know, and we were worried about a hostile dictator taking over our capital mm-hmm. at one point. Now, I understand that you're no longer running the business that got bought, bought out by McDonald's and no. and with a hefty profit. I, those are the rumors. Actually, we're just oh. down for the season. Oh, okay. I thought. I thought. It got a buyout for, for because three, of the competition that for, you gave for three hundred for three hundred and sixty days. It, the season is just not right. Oh, okay. What you hear now, folks, is um, a little bit of what we do here at KCTK Radio. It is um, we have mascots. That's right, mascots. <laughs> we have a mascot for the radio station. Her name is Gilly Pug. Let me see if I can show the picture of her. Here, wait. That's Gilly right there, folks. And the Drew sh- drew it. He <laughs> sure did. And then we also have uh, Blue, the puppy. Um, Paul will ever learn that we're on a radio show. and What? We're not visual for the most part. No, people are watching on people are watching on Facebook Live, and I just did this, Jack. I said, that is Gilly. Oh, they can see our video on Facebook Live now? Yes, right now. Oh, okay. So, hello, the world. And Blue is up there barking as well. So, Drew, let's get back to you, okay? What's been going on with you? I'm. Wait, wait. Let's go back to Jack. And then go back to you, and then go back to the dogs, and then back to me. Okay, okay. 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 First, Drew. I thought you wanted Jack first. Let's go back to Jack. <laughs> Jack. Yes. Jack. You were kind of. Uh, you were doing some KCTK um, mingling last night. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Me and Mac, me and Mac, we had a business meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very. Oh, I thought you were out me- meeting fans and stuff. Well, uh, there was a little bit of both. Uh-huh. Um, we had to, you know, business is business. We had to get that done, and then we could, then we could, then we met our fans. We met about four. It was, <laughs> it was, wow. it was quite the eventful meetup. That's a pretty b- large percentage of the people listen to us. <laughs> four? I think it's oh, more wow. than a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, um, 
what what were you meeting about? I mean, we just uh, we uh, we we just ran into each other, um, and we were talking about you know our sponsorship with Jack's Hot Dogs and where that's going. And you're not trying to get rid of me or Drew in the. I mean, he's not trying to undercut us, is he? I will plead the fifth in this situation, and I choose to not say anything. Okay. The fifth, the, that's the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, everybody, yes, is what he's referring to. Yes, the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution. Whenever you break a law and uh, you're a scumbag, that's what you use to uh, yeah, get yeah. out of it. So, so you're a scumbag. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's how I would put it. All right, that's I fine. Would, I, that's what I, I want would him do. to know that he's a scumbag. Oh, okay. Thank he's you. trying to get rid of us, I think. I, so we heard the jack, and we, we, we flipped it up, and we went back to Drew. And are you done, Jack? Yeah, I'm done. Oh, let's flip it back to Drew. Can you introduce Drew, please? Oh, and um, everybody put your hands together for the man that you already okay, know. Okay, Drew, what do you guys Drew. say? <laughs> <laughs> your introduction took way too long. Yeah. Anyway, uh, things are going good. Um, I'm going to see if everyone on Facebook Live can tell me what they think of your haircut. I would assume they think it looks pretty. Can you turn like, a little bit? There. Oh, is uh, okay. Yeah. Did you have someone actually cut your hair, or did you do it yourself? Yeah, I did it myself. Did you pay them to do that? I did. Oh, you did do it yourself? Did they pay you to do that? Yeah, they paid me. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, if they paid you, then it's totally yeah, worth it. But yeah. if you paid them, or if you did it himself, it'd be fine too. Yeah. Yep. Did it myself. Do you just shave? Just shave the sides? Yeah. They don't touch the top at all. I w- didn't want him to. Him? Oh. Yeah, the guy that cut my hair. You just told me that you did it. I lied. Of course I lied. Mac, we gotta get Mac. I'm just wondering, I was just wondering, did you cut your hair or did someone else cut your hair? Someone else cut my hair. Okay. Why does that matter? Second question. Did you pay them? Yes. Yeah, Mac. I did pay them. Yeah, Mac, we got a a liar here on the studio. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it over or under twenty dollars? Oh, it's twenty dollars. It was exactly twenty dollars. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I'm you... trying to think of how much that is. Oh, it's twenty dollars too much. <laughs> You're such a dick. You both are dicks. You tell me that if you give me money and then he gives me money, then that equals money. <laughs> <laughs> so, no one gives a really cares about your haircut. Your haircut at all? No one cares. That's, That's not, not true. What? That's not true. Who? Yeah, who does? No. Everybody seems no. to give a no. shit about my no, hair. No one cares. In this family. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good point. Can I can I go back to something? Yeah, go for it. I'm trying to trying to push it out of my mind. Okay, so okay. I'm just glad we're mostly an audio um, format. So help me out. Those of you listening on the podcast, it, he his hair is great looking. Yeah. It's awesome, yeah. and uh, it does look good. And uh, I weigh two hundred pounds, but nobody cares about any of that. He doesn't. He doesn't. That's the joke. They only care about the news from the Droosh. Drew, take it away. <clears throat> I have a question for you, Paul. <laughs> yes. What you know what? Wh- I'm going to be honest with you too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were had something there. Um, I guess I'll wait for the the drum roll. Um, why is it that millionaires are sex offenders? Why is it that millionaires are sex offenders? You know, I'm gonna come out and say it. that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? That Drew. Now you're thinking. Right. Yeah, so now you're not Jeffrey Ep- Epstein operated a vast sex trafficking network. I didn't know you were playing something behind me. Are you queer? Probably. I. Do you go to the news story, the top news story? I picked just this whatever one the top last week. One. I no, picked, you, no, you didn't because yeah, it, was, did. it wasn't. It wasn't a news story last week. This is the top news okay, story sorry, of this the week, day. This week I picked what, it. Today. What it's happened today. to like the fictional Loch Ness monster at the bottom <laughs> Brian, of the lake? You guys hated it. I liked so it. So I thought I'd get hard hitting news. Do you remember, I always liked it. Do you remember we talked about a guy that murdered someone 30 years ago and buried the body underneath? That was actually very that interesting. That was awesome. Okay, fine. I'll pick the other one I was going to do then. Now I only have one because you have to be going to be a dick. <laughs> By 2050, many U.S. cities will have weather like they've never seen before. <gasps> Kansas City's on the list. What? So, okay, we live in Kansas City. Oh, There's a correct. lot of international listeners on the po- podcast right. and in the 
Facebook Live. Right. But that's what. So how were our um, how were our weather changed? So anyway. To give you an idea of what they're talking about, that climate forecast for 2050, New York City winters will have the weather of today's Virginia Beach, or London will That's have bitching. hot and dry like Barcelona, or Seattle will be as drier as San Francisco. We, on the other hand, will where be we like yeah. where we are. You uh, won't be alive. Minneapolis then, in 2050 will be more like Kansas City with Minneapolis' warmest month shooting up from around. 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So apparently we're going to switch spots. So that's kind With of fun. Who, No, we're going to be probably like Dallas maybe or something? Probably. Dallas is hot as balls. But anyway. It's, it's terrible, isn't it? These, apparently those 115 cities, including Washington and 16 other U.S. cities, will have unprecedented climate conditions by 2050 compared to what we saw in 2000, the baseline for the study. I know we're not supposed to be political, mm-hmm. but I think if we get a new president, that something's we're gonna something's gonna change with how we're affecting. This Seems world. like we have to. Okay, so that is Sorry. thirty-one years from now, right? Yes. Yeah. So how old will you be, Jack, uh, Drew? I keep, keep um, wanting to go to both you guys at the same time. I can't. I'll be sixty. He'll be sixty-two, and I'll be fifty. Okay, I'll be. Let me figure it out. Let me see here. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dead. <laughs> Well, no, good for you. Actually, you don't have to live through it. Actually, I'll be 82. You might be able to make it yeah, that I'll far. Be, that's the that's year I'm going to die. Because I'm going to say, damn, it's hot. And then I'm going to die. <laughs> well, the north, northern, northern hemispheres, I guess they're going to get it the worst. And, I mean, they're, they're going to melt. Yeah. So, we're all going to probably die. Um, Here's what's oh, scary my. to me. Is it too late to even fix it? No, I don't know. I don't think it's too late. We have too much of a carbon footprint. Because people uh, care too much about fucking money. Yes, caller, you're on the air. Yes, yeah, so I always wanted to point out that, and also there's a TV show called Planet X 2050, and they show stuff where in 2050 you'll take your poo, and they can make energy out of it. So we got a bright future. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, maybe speak for yourself, caller six. Thank you, caller I mean, six. Are, are you, you going to be your own power factory? <laughs> do you poo a lot? I, I can't be. <laughs> I think we're being. Now, what is this called? Malcolm X, what is it? <laughs> Steve so can be planet, a power so machine. It's Station Planet X, and it's on uh, Channel 4 at like 8 o'clock in the morning. Channel 4? <laughs> yeah. Is it old TV? <laughs> what the hell? Channel 4? Channel 4. Is Dan Henry, is he the announcer on it? <laughs> Dan is dead, so they had to... Oh, wow. I didn't know he was sick. Walt was Bodine. That's good. <laughs> Walt Bodine is doing it? Walt Hey, uh, it's it's taken a couple weeks, but you found us on Wednesday. <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks for the invite. <laughs> uh, well, we kind of we moved around. Um, we did this for you, so you could listen to us. You didn't have to work. Yeah. Last I week, hope so. Um, oh, we did because on Thursday, I I hope it goes well for me tomorrow. The the improv thing. I hope it does too. I hope nobody th- comes in all of a sudden yelling obscenities and throwing tomatoes at you. Like I would be if I was there, because you deserve it. Oh, well, I'm just going to yell. Like I told this like you told this last week or a couple weeks ago, Paul. Uh, when when I get when I see you at the improv and you ask for a non geographical location, I'm going to say bathroom. I'm going to laugh so hard. Bathroom? That's the best location to come from now to go. You know how they do that in, in uh, at comedy sports. Stuff like that. Yeah, now, non-geographical location. Now you were you were you were very much involved with the comedy sports before, right? I was. What was the name of you. your team? Oh, I can't remember what our team was. Well, I was the Dingleberries. Were you on the Dingleberries? The, I was on. I was on the Dingleberries. Dingleberries. I call Dingleberry. mine the Laugh Factory. You're making what? that up right now, aren't Correct. you? Correct. Yeah, that was a bar. <laughs> this guy here. This guy here. That was a famous comedy bar. <laughs> So, so Keith, thanks for calling in and telling you us about no uh, 50 years hey. from now. If you have anything else, yeah. give us a call back. No, I just hope you do commercials. And that's the favorite part of the show. Oh, we will. We will. Okay. I gave you two this week. Well, no, wait a minute. You gave me you gave me a uh, progressive, right? Uh-huh. I don't think and we... I gave you a shave one. From oh, a shave one. Right? Okay. All right. I got to find that one. I don't know if we're going to do that because we have a special request this week. Um, from Jack. So, 
Um, oh, we may have to do that next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hot, Mr. Hot Dog. So thanks for calling. There goes uh, Caller 6. and uh, he's Number a, one fan right there. He's the number, number one fan. fan. He's a great guy. But uh, no one cares about any of it. It's time <laughs> for the sports report with Jack. Okay, so uh, for the sports report, St. Louis Blues are still the Stanley Cup champions. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! When that now? Wow, that's breaking news. Isn't it, it is. It's it's the big thing right now. It's awesome. It's awesome. And uh, women's won the World Cup, whatever. Yeah, right? but St. Louis Blues won the World Cup, won the Stanley Cup. So. Now, Drew, you don't want him to make fun of the World Cup. And he did it anyway. Girls, <laughs> he did it anyway. <laughs> Why is that? Why can't? Because I have a daughter, and I'm trying to be more, you know, supportive of women. Oh, is that another lie? Is that no, another, that's not a lie. Is that I really am trying to be different. <laughs> okay, I have a question about if you guys know about this uh, equal pay thing. Yeah. How much does a soccer player make now? I don't know, but I, don't know. I know they that they aren't getting paid enough. Na- nation- <laughs> national soccer players make a lot. So the guys on the on the U.S. team make a lot of money? U.S. team is not a very good team. Okay. So I doubt it. But, like, for example, the quote-unquote best soccer player in the world named C- Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a he is Polish. Wor- right? He gets paid for, like, a season, like, I could be yeah, wrong because I'm not a sports guy. So? Well, these the the World Cup isn't a professional league. It's it's kind of like the Olympics, where they're all considered um, I guess amateurs re- representing their state. Well, I guess they get paid. I don't understand it at all. I don't, I don't understand get it because I was just say professional soccer players like Ronaldo. He, I think he's paid like three hundred million dollars a season. Yeah. How long is a season? I I don't know. Like you know, when, it's the winter time. I don't I don't quite. Know how? I don't know what they mean by equal. I'd love to know the equal pay. I think the only thing they must be talking about is that the U.S. women's soccer player doesn't get as much as the men's U.S. soccer player. And they Especially, should. And, and they and definitely and should. They should get paid more because they're winners. Yeah. Yes. So what Defending I would defending winners. Yeah. <laughs> what I would do to solve the problem, I would go into the men's soccer and I would cut their damn salary because they suck. Yeah. And then would they be even? Does that mean cut their dick off? No, I'd cut their salary. Oh, what did you think I said? <laughs> I thought you said celery. What is wrong with you? You've been reading too much of that book. No, that book has no, <laughs> that book's got nothing to do with it, dude. Well, so okay, I'm all for the women's soccer too. Okay, does also... Quinn does Quinn play soccer? Or... Yeah, she has a little soccer ball she plays with. Oh, that's awesome. Does she really? <laughs> no, really. Yeah, her mom bought it. Just because the women ladies win? No, because Michelle used to play soccer. Uh, oh, your wife played soccer too? Back in the day, yeah. What day? Uh, high school. She was on the soccer team in high school? She didn't play for the high school. She played independent. For independence? Uh, uh, independent league. Oh. Yes. Did she get paid the same as an independent player <laughs> I don't who was a man? Paid. I don't think she got paid. Okay, so that's And a, I don't think any other soccer player in my school got paid either. Did you play soccer at all? No, I played football and disc. I threw discus. <laughs> Did you see how disgusted you got? No, I didn't play soccer. I played football. What about you? Did you ever play soccer? No. Okay. I played soccer as a kid. Does that count? I never played. I sat in the sidelines. So I, I was on a soccer team. <laughs> Wow. Quote unquote. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so uh, um, everybody listen here. I got a little bit of a thing to talk about. Oh, that's a charger. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the parking lot earlier. That's where I remember you. And now it's time <laughs> for the Jack Report. The Jack Book Report. I thought you'd have oh, some. Oh, you're, like, you're not going to do tech. You can go, you're going to go with books. Yeah. I need something more more sensible. I need a different wow. song. Okay. Can you give me a different song? Uh, yeah, I'll work on it. I need something more polite. But once I get my song. So, folks, this isn't really a... Okay, this isn't really a book. It's a graphic novel. Okay? It is called Uzumaki. Actually, it's, a, it's actually called Spiral into Horror. Uzumaki. It's by Jinjin Ito, a Japanese author. So it, it is a manga, so it is the backward. The book is backwards. And oh, I, it's yeah, and I will read you what this is about. Yeah. Kurozurocho, a small fog-bound town on the coast of Japan, is cursed. According to Sucho, the withdrawn boyfriend of teenager Kiri, 
their town is haunted not by a person, but by a pattern. Uzumaki, the spiral. The hypnotic shrinkage shape of the world. This bizarre masterpiece of horror manga is now available in a single volume. Fall into manga? a whirlpool of terror. Basically, it's just kind of a horror story. Okay. Now, so basically, as you say, the town... Okay, okay, no, wait a minute. What? You said the book is backwards. Can you open... So you read it. So you read it in this right direction. Right to left. You read it from so right to left. left to right. So it's a, it's like a backward. It, it, ba is that what they do in Japan or something? Yeah. Okay. They do that for all. That's what makes them stand out, I guess. I wouldn't say stand out. It's how they. It's how they read too. Is I that, never knew. Oh. I, okay. It, it, I, I thought saying. it was like to stand out. Uh uh. Okay. Cool. So let me I'll show you. Something new. Let me, it, it, do you find it difficult to do it that way? No. Okay. I'll admit. I, I do read some mangas. I started reading a DC comic. I ended up actually reading it backwards. I was, I was talking about oh, my... I, I was talking I'm about. sorry. My bad. Uh, but so, well, no, wait. Wait. So, a lot of the... What's it called? The Manga. The, They're called manga. manga. Mangas are backwards. Yes. And, and you've read enough of them where you're, like, used to it. And now you go to... Yeah. To... And I was like, oh, shit, I'm reading it backwards. A civilized country <laughs> that has right things. Okay. Sorry, my I was sorry. To it wasn't me. I, yeah, I thought it'd be funny. To now say. it's a pretty sorry. big book, though. Yeah. So and basically, this town gets cursed, and there's certain different things. I'm not gonna show Drew this because Drew's gonna read it, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different art things, elements. Okay. So here's the first thing. Is that kind of creepy? Look, it reminds me of Stranger Things. It could it could give you a thing yeah. like that. It's oh. two young people looking at here's a very the, scary the, thing. There's the, there's the inside and everything cover. is swirl. Yeah, everything is swirl. I was gonna say. So the town is cursed by it. Uh huh. There's another paper we can get that. And out folks, of. this is why you. I mean, this is why you got to get on Facebook Live so you can see the stuff. So there's the girl. A girl. He's seen. Drew's seen this one. It's with the, the one head. With the face. Her face is a swirl. Yeah. Okay. So. If I were to read this page, yes, I would start yeah. here, uh -huh. then go here, then here. Then go here and go okay. over and down, and then that I can do it. I'm you could. Uh -uh. I was gonna say, and then there's one more pretty creepy thing that I figured I'd show you. Whoa! So basically, it's got a very heavy art style. It's a lot of scary. It's actually very. It it gave me a kind of a nightmare last night because mm -hmm. I thought about it while I was sleeping, um, and I thought. What's about, the general plot of it? The general plot is that um, survival horror. No, it's it's that. There's this one, there's this one spiral, and this one man gets addicted to it, and then his addiction goes so crazy that his ashes, when they get burned and they go into the sky, his, as his ashes go up, they turn into a spiral, because that's how addicted he was to it, and, and this isn't really given that much away, but that, this whole thing of this guy turning into a spiral and freaking everyone out, Everyone sees them everywhere now, and the town is cursed by it. Okay. And so people, it's like a, and, it sounds like a... And there's a lot of death in it. Like, a lot of people die from who's this. Who's the main character? Uh, it's the girl named Kito. Kiri. Sorry. Very, her name very, Her name is Kiri. Seems very Lovecraftian. Is I know it, you guys don't know what that means. But. I know what Minecraft is. It's cosmic horror. It's not oh, like that. cosmic horror. And so, is, are they teenagers? Or are they? Yeah, they're they're yeah. like they're like high schoolers. That it's this one girl and then her boyfriend, and then they're just kind of. Exp it, they're so have you? You haven't read this one? Mm -mm. Are you going to? Mm -hmm. I and did drive yesterday. I drove down to the plaza just to get this because our Barnes and Noble didn't have it. And so you're halfway done with it. Yeah. What would what would you give it? I. Okay, I'm gonna do two separate ratings. Okay. I got the 1 to 10 from not scary to scary, Ooh. or I won't do scary, I'll do kind of horrific to not horrific. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a 7. Okay. What? Okay. What was that? It was Max saying it's not on Facebook. Oh. Um, and then from, and other than that, I give it probably about a, a, a 9. Like, the story's pretty cool. It jumps a lot, which kind of upsets me, but I, I like it a lot. So yeah, it's called Spiral into Horror Uzumaki. Um, now they only sell it in one volume. Originally, it was three separate volumes, um, and it's about so they put it all together. It's about a seven hundred page book. My thing that I like about these graphic novels is that I read it like I feel. I don't think I'm reading. I feel like I'm in a movie, like mm -hmm. I'm like I'm watching a movie go down. That's what I like about Hero, Academia. Yeah, yeah. So just action packed. Like look at that's just crazy. I know that's trippy as hell. See now, when it's black, 
when you know it's not in color, it just looks like a black hole. Yeah, you can't tell what it yeah. is. Yeah. Now you want to know what I'm gonna do? Here's a little. Here's a little just side conversation for everybody to listen in on. Um, the picture, this picture right here. Yeah. I'm gonna buy a. Uh, I'm gonna buy a, like a kayak oar, a wooden one. I'm gonna sand it all down and I'm gonna paint that on it. <laughs> that'd be nuts. I just think that'd be cool to hang that'd up in my really room. That'd be really cool, man. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I don't know if I'm gonna, if it's gonna look good or. Once you look- carve it. I'm not, I won't be carve it and paint. It, it's just an idea. You don't have to. I don't think it'd look as good if you carved it, but no, I, I got do. Why? Well, so we're gonna put the ore just like on the wall or something. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put it on I, the wall. I've never seen you sail, so I wouldn't know. So that's it. That's pretty cool, man. And that's it. That that is the segment of. Is Jet. that our first book report on the show? Yeah, that's the first book report. Wow, I'll have to have a book report next week for myself. Yeah, I'm reading Doomsday Clock. I'll give it to you on Saturday. I'll give this to you on Saturday because I'll be done with it by then. Damn. Maybe we can have a discussion. Okay. I still I need to give your book back. Huh? I still need to give you... What, uh, Ready Player One? Yeah, I need to give that back to you. Cool. By the way, that movie's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> the book is really good. Damn. Why, so, why would you skip the Ferris Bueller part? Yeah, I know. So we're, we're on Facebook Live now. I, I don't know why we weren't on there before, but hi, folks. Uh, welcome... Back and, to the sh- back to the studio, and you missed you missed a lot of good stuff, um, but it's okay because we venture on, we we continue on, we have a great time. You miss some amazing stories from um, not only I forget what your story was. Mine was about 2050. Oh, that's right, climate change. That was and, awesome, and Uzumaki. <laughs> So thank you, Jack, for the the book. Spiral Hell. I feel like you're bringing (laughs) us up a little bit instead of just some dumb comic book that we read all the time. Okay, so let's take a break. We'll be back with more KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew. Thanks. trunk right now i'm being kidnapped by my bookie because i haven't paid him in three years but that's not going to stop me because i still have my cell phone and i have verizon i have unlimited minutes and i can call the cops right here now if my hands weren't tied behind my back but let me tell you what i could do it if the phone was in my possession i'm literally talking to nobody right now except maybe a tire that seems to be the only friend i have but i digress do not and will not change my mobile uh, plan without looking at Verizon. Because Verizon's the best, and I have unlimited, and I will find a way to get out of this. And maybe my bookie will just take a thumb. I don't know. But I'll tell you what he can't take. He can't take my Verizon. And you should take Verizon and run with it. And you tell him that the guy in the trunk on Bleecker Street is calling and send the police. Thank you. Hey, do you have bad credit? Well, luckily for you, we got UBS Credit Line. You just come to the bank, sit down, scribble on some paper, and then we'll get you some credit and we'll give you some money. Are you poor, broke, stupid, dumb, um, crippled, or need support? Well, lucky for you, UBS Credit Line will approve you, even if you have bad credit. Come on in, and we will give you a great deal. Thank you. Tones. Cash now. Are you receiving payments from a mortgage note, annuity, structured court settlement, or lottery winning? Obtain a free quote. That's all it says. (laughs) <laughs> if you want money and you want money right now give us a call at 
735-0060. It will be lots of fun to get your money back from us. Do it the money way. Do it the Harrington way. What is Harrington? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back to KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew and Jack, who's all up in your face. I got it on my phone. I don't understand. It was, it was, we were having hundreds, if not literally thousands, if not literally millions of people um, watching us on Facebook, and then it went down, then went back up. We flipped over to Jack, we flipped over to Drew, we flipped when the puppies were barking, and uh, we're back on live now. Wave at the camera. And I missed a, I missed a story. Can we go back before we do the commercial review of story? Yeah. So, um, here's the story. Uh, a woman feels felt violated when a man used a gender-neutral bathroom in front of her. Have you heard about this? No. Oh, jeez. Well... I can't really do a story unless there's music behind it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was a little delayed there. So, here's the story. I like the build up. <laughs> woman feels violated when a man uses a gender neutral bathroom in front of her. People in the U.S. have been arguing uh, over gender neutral gender neutral bathrooms for years and opinions need to be split a woman took a twitter recently to share her complaint about a man in a gender neutral bathroom here's what her tweet said i used a gender neutral bathroom today and two men came in while i was washing my hands man number one didn't care and used the bathroom in front of me man number two waited outside the bathroom till i left after seeing me inside i think mr I think man number two for respecting my privacy. I felt so violated. Well, Your uh, thoughts? Can I ask questions? Yes. Okay. Um, now, I, I know that you probably won't be able to answer this, but I'm going to assume that by use the restroom in front of me, there was a stall. That's a great question. Or a urinal. Um, this is a tweet. So then after this person tweeted this, they start getting beat up pretty good, okay? She she got beat up good? Yeah. Okay, she good. should. This is stupid. The question oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. was there a urinal? <laughs> no, it was an open toilet. And it was a one-stall bathroom. Okay. okay. Oh, well, that's just rude. Um, okay, and it says... Your dad would argue differently. Just... Yeah, dad is stupid, so... <laughs> and she didn't lock the door. She said there was no lock. Um, she felt violated because he unzipped his pants and peed inside in front of me. As a woman, I was uncomfortable sharing a bathroom with a man. So is that why you are single? <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I have questions. Just okay. saying. So this is, this is a, a tiny little room mm -hmm. with a toilet and a sink. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, listen. You can't... Okay, first off... Fuck that guy for going in there because yes. th that's a one person, one person one in there person at a time. There. Right, that's right. You don't go in there. Hey, Steve, but, if you're listening, <laughs> but what if you, you lock the door when you but, go in there? What it's if one you, person. What if you open the door, someone's washing their hands, and you go into a stall? Is that bad? No, not at all. Okay, even that, if it's a man, because that's separate. Well, gender neutral, whatever. Because here's the thing: she, she the, the, the thing that sucks about the situation because I know for a fact that if. Those guys, if there was a stall and people went in there, <coughs> people would be going, well, what if they're gender neutral? You're assuming that they're a man. Blah, blah, blah. What ah. if they think that they're something? But um, if it, if there's no stall, if it's just an open toilet, that is inappropriate. That guy should not, or whoever it is, they should not have done that. If there's a stall and that person does that, that is completely, um, I don't know how to explain it. They are stupid. <laughs> they're, no, I won't say ethical because they're not. Um, <laughs> they should just grow a pair and get over it. Yeah. Don't go and bitch on Twitter. Okay, my stance. Yeah. Did he close the door in the stall? I, I, we don't, I can't figure that out from Okay. It. 
If he closed the door, then this is all moo. Yes, I agree with you. If and- he closed the door and it's a gender neutral bathroom, mm-hmm. right. it does not matter. It's considered technically co ed. Yes. So if he closed the door and used the bathroom, she should just keep her mouth and her opinions to herself. Right. Because that's what this bathroom is yes. designed for. Now, the guy getting out, that makes sense because there's more than one person in the bathroom already. Yeah. It's a very small bathroom. He respected space. Uh-huh. I appreciate that. And he probably waited because it's only one stall. What's the point in him waiting in there if there's only one stall? Now, do you want If you walk into a bathroom and there's a stall and a sink, do you lock the door? Yes. Right. You do? But she says there was no lock, though, is what, uh, what you said. Well, she said she didn't lock it. Okay, well, she should have locked she it. If n- she didn't want anybody coming in, she should have locked it. She's, she, um, no, she said there was no lock on the door. What if it had been a woman that walked in? It, it, it would, uh, obviously, it would have been fine. But then it would make it a ladies' bathroom. What? It, it, this is saying that she forgot to lock the door. Okay. Here's the problem. Oh, so there was a lock she yes. forgot to. Here's the problem, okay? The guy was confused. He probably should have waited until she was gone. Correct. Might but as well just I don't be know. If, on that but, fact. But, the guy's but, not getting sued or anything, is he? No. But okay. we need to, we just like, we got to figure this out. Are we either going to do it gender neutral bathrooms or we're not? Right. And if we're not, then that's kind of, to me, causes more of the problem with the trans folks that, you know, where do people are going to get all. Where are they going to uh, fit? They're going to be all yeah. upset that they're not in the right bathroom. Right. If there's a gender neutral, then we all need to kind of relax a little bit. And she, I mean, she said I if he was a bad guy, he could have raped me. Well, I mean, he didn't. What? He, he didn't. He, okay, first off, that's probably also why his friend waited in the hallway. It was probably, he's like, this chick probably didn't think that something bad's going to happen to her mm-hmm. if two dudes are just hanging in the bathroom with her. That makes sense. He probably was thinking smart on that. Again, if he shut the door in the stall, then this is just a... Um, no, there's no point to bitch. And this is what she says. I still be humble enough to use the bathroom with white women since my grandmother couldn't, and now I have to share it with men. I'm not okay with it. I mean, that just doesn't make sense what she's saying, right? It is. Um, I don't know. So I, she I don't. Know. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to talk about it because the whole entire thing is is that. This it's just so confusing it, I, because here's the thing: there's this guy. There could be a biker dude, the manliest man you've ever seen in his life, and he considers himself a woman. Mm-hmm. And guess what? If he would have done the exact same thing, it's still fucking crazy, right? Because because. But I here's here's my thought. I don't think I if, don't think if, we're ever going to figure it out. Ever. If we want acceptance of people, then we need to start accepting people. So, don't go to Twitter and complain because these guys are dumb. Here's a newsflash for women. Men are stupid. and <laughs> You know what I mean? And yeah. it sounds like they were confused and didn't know what to do. Men are if the very door, stupid. If the door was locked, they probably knew what to. And the other guy, did he wait outside because she was in there or because the other guy was in front of him? Well, they just need to relax a little bit. Yeah. And I want to go back to this rule that I stated before that I really believe in. Let's just get rid of Twitter. It's nothing but a garbage heap. Our and- president uses it to say certain things. That he shouldn't. <laughs> it is terrible. I mean, it's a terrible thing. And it is no good. It is no good. So, if there was a petition to get rid of it, would you sign it? Yeah, absolutely. I would. Mm, I don't know. I, I'm I'm against getting rid of freedom of speech, but just for your own good, folks, just don't go to Twitter. I don't even use it, so I don't care. Because it stinks. It stinks to high heaven. But it, it just it seems it like does. a problem. It does stink. I understand where you're coming from. Let's move to something a little more fun, folks. What we're known for. You know, I walked down the street the other day, and uh, they say, hey, why are you walking down the street? (laughs) And I said, because I wanted you to stop me to see (laughs) if I was going to do a commercial (laughs) review. And you did, so I appreciate that. Now, this is an interesting commercial review, folks. We review commercials. There's no other show that does. We're the the ones that invented it. And um, (laughs) um, we're the first one to ever actually invent anything. Ever in the history of time. We will. I also created the post-it note. You did. I did. Still haven't seen that money. Oh. So what's interesting about this situation is that our young friend Jack here is the one that actually has decided what commercials we're doing this time. And Jack, 
you you brought this up because you feel like we're a little too negative on the commercials, right? I think, yeah, I think that we could look at some commercials and commend them for what they are. Um, there's one specific line of commercials that I talked about last week, and I think that they are probably the best marketing campaign. Okay, I guess I can't say ever, but they are... Like, when I see a commercial by them, I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't want that. Like, I, it, it's the real cost commercials. It's the ones that are telling young people, like, hey, you do, don't, do not smoke. Don't smoke ciggies. Don't rip heaters. And these are, what are they call again? The, the real cost. cost. The real cost. So let's take a look at some of those. Drew, I'm, I'm really interested in your opinion of, of this, because I hate commercials. He thinks they're good. So you're kind of you're kind of be the referee here, you know. I like it. I like to be the okay. The maverick, so the there's wild. different kinds. There's a vaping one, vape dip cigarettes. Which one do you think we should watch? Let's do some. Do do the real cost of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, the music doesn't fit. <laughs> let's pause that. Let's pause that a little bit, and then let's watch. One called Smoking, Nicotine, and Addiction. The Cold Hard Facts. A lot of teens underestimate the power of nicotine, but it's a highly addictive chemical in cigarettes that can literally change the way your brain works, causing you to crave more and more nicotine. Modern cigarettes are designed to deliver nicotine more quickly to the user, making them even more addictive. And menthol cigarettes may be even harder to quit than other cigarettes. It takes as little as one cigarette a month for some teens to develop symptoms oh my. of addiction. And because of addiction, three out of four teens who smoke will continue to smoke as adults even if they want to quit. It's your life. You should be in control, not tobacco. The thing that the thing that kind of let's talk actually about here. Let, let, let's look up a certain the real cost commercial. Okay. For one, smoking can cause both immediate and look long term up, damage. Um, convenience store the real cost. Okay, because those are the real growth. Those are the real messed up ones. But let me go ahead and kind of uh, give you. I know a a lot of people that smoke cigarettes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that jewel. A lot of people have nicotine addictions. Um, I, I kind of get upset at the fact that they don't really emphasize the fact that it, it's. Not, I mean, yeah, nicotine is what causes it, but nicotine's also not the thing that gives you cancer. It's the tobacco that gives you cancer, and that hurts you. Oh, there we go. Describe a little bit. Hold on, let's watch this one. Pack of cigarettes, please. It's not enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I've seen this one. What's a pack of smokes cost? Your teeth. Smoking can cause serious gum disease that makes you more likely to lose them. See you again. What are cigarettes costing you? So the, what happened there, a guy goes in, asks for cigarettes, and the guy said, that's not going to cost you enough, and they had to pull with some pliers his teeth out one, because it cost your teeth. Have you seen the one where the chick pulls her skin off? Yeah. Those are <clears throat> those are my my favorite ones of the real cost. And I know that they're gross, but they are... Um, it's that one right there. Yep. Perfect. After the advertisement. Or wait, it'll... Wait, what the heck? Why isn't it working? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a, that... Okay. Someone's... Someone recorded it, yeah. Why are you sharing it? Empty. What are you Where doing? Find 47 AA batteries? Go, just go back. Go How click the back button. You... And do the one above it. Sour Patch Kids. Sour? Yeah, the top one. No, the second one, yeah. No, we do the top one. Sorry. We've already done that one, no. dude. Oh. Here dude. we go. Pack of menthols? Honey, I'm gonna need more than that. She's pulling her skin off her face. What's a pack of menthols cost? Your smooth skin. See you again. Smoking menthols or regular cigarettes causes wrinkles that age you prematurely. What are menthols costing you? Now I'm going to vomit, I think. Yeah. 
they are uh, they're pretty gross. So it definitely communicates a uh, uh, something, and um, I almost both my close friends both have nicotine addictions. Oh, and I get bothered because I don't like the idea of letting a chem- something control me. Mm-hmm. Like I just I just couldn't I just can't fathom it. Like I need to have I need to do this. Yeah, I just can't I just can't mentally handle it. Well, here's the thing that that I think is bad about smoking that is goes a little unreported. It's such a pain in the ass because you you can't smoke in someone's car. You have to go outside and smoke, right? You used to smoke, right? Yeah. And just out of pure convenience, you just don't want to deal with it. And if you're friends with someone, they're like, "I gotta go outside and smoke now. I gotta do this now." Oh shit! Come on, man, let's go do something. I gotta go smoke a cig. Can we eat outside so I can smoke a yeah, cig? Yeah, right. It's like, dude, I don't. Smoke no, I'm not an me. animal. I'm not eating outside. Now, you don't. You don't smoke cigarettes no more. Was that, a, was, that, was that a hard thing to quit smoking cigarettes and chewing? Yeah. Was it really hard? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got addicted to the gum. Oh, the Nicorette gum. <laughs> so. How would you rate those that commercial? I think they're very good commercials. What about you, Drew? You're new to this, new to these commercials. Or maybe I give, give it a hard ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it an erected an erected ten as well. Hey, I listened last week and he yeah. doesn't get the subtlety of it and you got <laughs> mad at him about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that why he keeps doing that? I think so. Okay. I would say I, I think it's effective. I erected. You know who pays for those commercials? The government. Kind of. Tobacco companies have to pay the government and then pay for those. So the part of their settlement, yeah. Really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Well, the thing that the thing that's kind of that's kind of interesting is that the, the cigarette companies know that they're going out of business. Like Marlboro, they're switching to the, the vape, the, the marijuanas. Oh, that's what I'm worried about, though. They're right swi- there, I'm worried that they're going to get a hold of marijuana, and then it's going to start killing people because they're going to start putting like chemicals and shit into it, like well, they did with tobacco. Yeah, I well, mean, no, I don't think, I don't. Think I that, think that I can see that happening. Do you see where I'm getting at? Well, I think it's bigger. It's bigger than just that. It's it's actually, a big business thing. I actually, mean, McDonald's and Coke has killed more just as many people. You, you know so what? You know what? Let's yeah. go ahead and think about this because here's the thing: everyone has their own different process about how they how they process stuff. Like, here's the thing: you can't get the taste of McDonald's hamburger anywhere else. Period. Yeah. But if Marlboro starts making cigarette or starts making like joints and stuff like that, mm-hmm. there's gonna be people that goes. Can't get the same buzz as I do with the Marlboro without the Marlboros. I need the Marlboros, and they're they're called Mar. Are they called Marlboros? Marlboro. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Marlboro. That just shows that I don't smoke yeah, cigarettes. I don't Marlboro or yeah. whatever. But it basically, like, the, you know, you're probably right. They'd probably put, they're probably something in their chemical process and making it all with their factories and instead of like making it organic and like, I, yeah, it may get you high, but it's more, it's a healthier growing. It's a lot more healthy yeah, compared but to also, what they're going to do with it. With there's the also, all, it. yeah, but there's also a lot of people like to, you know, make them themselves. Now, a lot of people uh, uh, get some butt and do. I'm getting some messages from the text line. Um, one of our listeners says that that commercial reminds me of after school special. You guys ever watch after school specials? Nope. They had a big. Usually, it was some kid that smoked or did something bad, and they. You know, I remember they had. Deal. They made us all watch one in Scouts. Uh, about um, <laughs> you were in Scouts. You know, I'm not bragging. I'm bragging. Um, about an adult touching you and stuff. Oh, uh, how to or what? Uh, what to do if that happens? <laughs> oh, it was, okay. a, it was a how to tutorial. You know what? When, when uh, <laughs> I was I was a sponsor for someone when they got confirmed for um, their Catholic church, and we had to watch that video too. Oh, for like the. Oh, you're lying. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Except ours was a how-to tutorial. <laughs> you guys are assholes. So <laughs> I give it. I give that. A, I guess a, a seven. I guess it's. Do you think? Do you think those things make people not stop smoking, or do you think they just kind of take up space? I think. I think the ID because. I, I mean. You don't have to pay attention to it, but you know, like, you watch those, Mm -hmm. and you always think about them after. Or, I don't know how to explain it. Like, like when it comes to marketing, I mean, you 
you could see a logo a hundred times in a day and not pay attention to yeah. it, but then you'll see it. You'll need it one time. You'll go, oh, I recognize that logo. I need that. Have you ever have you ever seen the one where it's the guy yeah, going? Uh, my throat is gone, and this is how I talk now. <laughs> yeah, and those are gross. Like that. Those those are gross. Well, I, I, my own mother said that she saw that, and she said, "That's it. I'm done smoking." Isn't that interesting? So maybe these lot more graphic things are better than. I'm I'm honestly surprised that people they're putting it on TV because the guy ripping out his tooth or a girl peeling off her skin it's pretty gross. I mean it is pretty gross. But here's the thing: I bet you they're going, yeah, let's put it on TV. I was like, yeah, let's do it so instead I- of instead of like I shit my pants. You remember that? You remember that commercial? Yeah. The I shit my pants. So I'm going to repeatedly give that one a hard eight. Oh, and over, erect it over and over again. A throbbing eight. <laughs> So let's go ahead and take a break. <laughs> uh, hey, Facebook Live, thanks for listening to us. And uh, we'll be right back with more KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew and Jack, who is all up in your face. Trunk guy here again. Well, lo and behold, I lost a thumb. But you know what I didn't lose? My cell phone. They gave it back to me and let me call the cops, and I had to wait 20 minutes before they left. I was bleeding pretty bad, but they could not save the thumb. But but you know what I did save was my cell phone and my Verizon plan, and I'm able to finally get my cell phone back. The problem is, texting with one hand has now become a chore. So I'll have to figure that out, but... Thank God for Verizon, because I have unlimited minutes and unlimited data. I also have the ability to call from anywhere, even in the middle of nowhere is where they found me. In somebody's field. Thanks, Verizon. You saved my life, but not my thumb. Verizon, the number one cellular company for meth heads. Do it the Verizon way. Are you ready? Are you ready? This is Johnny Bravo or Danny Bravo. What did I say last week? I forget what. Let's let's go with. This is Danny Bravo telling you, Valley View Automotive's got all the hottest SUVs you've been looking for this week only. Enjoy a test drive and an opportunity to drive one of these powerful vehicles off the lot at half the price. Yes, half the price. Now's the time to get yourself a Valley View by car, by foot, or even by air. And tell them Danny Bravo sent you to take advantage of this outrageous sale. You better get here quickly because the promotion is only going on for the next 24 hours. You better get here. And guess what? I'm not going to even tell you where here is. You just better get here. And you better get here quick. Let's go with I'm Danny Bravo. A voice that's gruff and kind of a rip-off of Johnny Dare. Here, for Valley View Automotives. Well, hey there, Scouts. (laughs) Would you like to learn how to tie a knot or cut up a tree or skin a rat? Well, guess what? This is Billy Bob's Wilderness Survival Classes. Do you want to pursue above the other scouts to show off for your scoutmaster and be his special little someone? Well, lucky for you, boy, I got some tips for you. Feel free to come on down to my shack down the street, down 42 Highway, then take a left, and then we will be right there waiting for you. Remember, this is Billy Bob's survival skills, and I'd be happy to show you how it's done. Feel free to drop by. Goodbye. (laughs) 
Welcome back to KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew. I gotta tell you, folks, I'm a little thrown off. I'm thrown off first by the Facebook thing. Number two, by the gruesomeness of the ads. <laughs> and the horror of the book review. And then finally, what are my dogs doing upstairs? They're fine. They're good. They're they run playing? Are, are they playing? They're, they're literally at the door, just... Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> They're causing lots and lots of issues. A ruckus. Are you okay? Bring them, bring them, bring the ruckus. <laughs> and um, I'm glad they're here with us. But I mean, give me a break already. All right. Right. I feel you, Paul. I understand. No one cares. They only care about the news of the Druish. Yeah. Nobody cares about the news of the Druish. No. They. Everyone does. Oh. The oh. world does. All right. You guys ready for this one? Oh yes. yes. A rich guy molested a girl. <laughs> Go. Actually, no. Um, the cursed image of Momo will be a cursed horror movie. Oh, okay. What's Momo? I mentioned Momo before, and you guys were like, huh? You guys are like, what's Momo? You guys were all like, oh. Uh, what's that? I don't even know what that is and everything you like know, that. You know, that was, um, that was just, maybe I'm wrong, but that was just some uh, makeup artist. They just made that, and yeah. then it just scared their shit it was out called, of it's, its actual name is called the Mother Bird, but it's called Momo. Um, the work by Japanese artist was originally set on display in 2016 in an art gallery in Tokyo. It didn't cause much of a stir at the exhibit, but then photos of it started circling online with it dubbed Momo and used to launch the fake Momo challenge. That was viral. Images of the terrible chicken lady's vi- face was allegedly being hit- edited into children's videos where right. she goaded kids into hurting themselves. And that Ooh. did not, in fact, cause an epidemic of violence, but is objectively and indisputably true that Momo is a horror to gaze upon. True. And, but then they came up with the story that someone killed themselves after right. Momo told them to, so anyway, which is all bull crap. Uh, she did it as an interpretation of a Japanese myth about a woman who died in a childbirth and whose spirit remained on Earth to continue haunting people, which sounds very in line with the sensibility of the producer who brought... Uh, Momo in the, the foundation of another horror movie in the works called Gateway. A teen screams. Why is that for? I don't know. It's just funny noise. Oh. <laughs> okay. So they're making a movie off of it. Yeah. Okay. Go Dude, on. Stop playing Gateway. it. That artist is going to make so much money. The movie's going to be called Gateway. Why don't they call it Momo? I don't know. It's called Teen Screams Picture about a bunch of young people who run afoul of the urban legend. Who's starring in it? It doesn't say who's uh, starring. This has just now been greenlit. So uh, I heard uh, uh, Robert Patterson is starring in it. Oh, I heard also that um, Taylor Swift is going to play the Bird Lady. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of crazy. Did you hear that Taylor Swift's the richest celebrity last year? She yeah, but now somebody else. owns all of her property, so who knows? <laughs> She'll get it back. We'll see. Now, are you going to go see the Momo movie? No. That was stupid. Oh. I think that whole thing was stupid. Just tell your kids, hey, if this thing talks to you, just don't listen to it. You know How what? How about you come get me and I'll turn it off? And as a real journalist, you followed up because there's hundreds, literally thousands, perhaps millions of people who listen to this podcast. And I'm saying, trying to save them and their and kids. And they're like, what's going on now with Momo? Right. What's the latest with Momo? Well, guess what? It's about to come right back around. It's so, going to be in a yeah. movie. Now, Jack, you're a young, dumb kid. Would you <laughs> Would you go watch the Momo movie? Um, probably maybe, not. Maybe take your gal to the drive-in. Because I hate to say it, but scary movies aren't good. I don't like watching wow, bad dude, movies. Wow, there are some that are good. You know, you're wrong. But would you okay. like to know something? My yeah, aunt, let's hear it. You want to know something that Mac did when I was younger? What's that? He showed me a video of like a right after Michael Jackson died of a ghost, and then Michael Jackson's a jump scare, and then for years I was scared of Michael Jackson. Hmm. Well, that, that was, was smart. probably to save you. Yeah, it's probably good. Yeah, he's dead, so it's okay. Oh, oh, I, mean, I was sick. <laughs> Well, there's Two a lot. I mean, it, it seems to be. It seems as though horror movies are very popular nowadays. Yeah, it is really good. The remake of it, and they're having it part two. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Chapter two, Sorry. more it. Chapter two. Well, it's oh. a book. The <laughs> more, book series is split in two. It. So, it's called it part two. It happens. <laughs> it's about to go down. It's, a, <laughs> it's about better. to go down. <laughs> but this time, it is a clown. <laughs> no, I also I worry that we've ruined clowns. 
Do well, you guys remember time ever where there was clowns on TV and you'd okay. be like, hee 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 hee? I deal. remember when I my mother to, collected clowns. Uh, uh -huh. I'm being Shit completely serious. The person that ruined clowns is John Wayne Gacy. I don't know. He killed kids and dressed up like a clown. I, <laughs> I know. I don't think it was just him, but the, then you got the Joker, and then you got... I didn't know about John Wayne Gacy till I was about 17 years yeah. old, so it didn't fear me. And then you got, got the killer clowns, the kids that run around like yeah. clowns. That's that's what really Are you guys clowns. down with the clown posse? No, I do not like... I, just clown clown say, I am down to clown, if you are wondering. Okay. <laughs> right. I was wondering But that. not with insane clown posse. Oh, no, down oh, to clown. oh no, I'm down to clown. <laughs> oh, no, okay. he's down to clown. Okay. I, I guess I'm he's in, down to clown. I'm he's going to be a juggalo all the way. I am ready to clown. That's what they're called, right? Yeah, and... Juggalette is a woman. I'm ready to clap. That's beautiful. You are such a juggalo, this guy. Dude, what did he just say? <laughs> well, it's been great. Uh, it's about... Yep, it's time. The show's over. <laughs> Aren't you happy with my new stories? No. I love them. I love uh, both I'll, of them. I'll keep doing the fun ones. I'm trying to remember what they were. Instead they were... of doing, apparently, sex it... trafficking and murder. Yeah, and... But I well, did. that one murder was fine. Yeah, that was fun, a fun one. And then <laughs> you had what was your first story? My first story was about climate change. Oh yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, between me and you, better than the book report we got. <laughs> no, but I like. Hey, next week we'll hear the rest of the book. Yeah, me and Drew are gonna review if he decides to take time and read it. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening, Brian. And also next week. We need a sports report for me. <laughs> okay. Do you guys want to know what's going to be on the sports report next week? No. Nope. nope. <laughs> Tell us next week. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week, folks. Uh, KCTK Radio's Week Review with Paul and Drew. Thanks, folks. This has been a KCTK production produced by Paul Lavoda. If you want more information about this content, then you have some real weirdness going on. You can always check out KCTK Radio on Facebook. Listen to live programs at kctk.radio12345.com. Yes, and that is on the World Wide Web. Thank you.